<laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Anderton's TV. Hello. It's well, Mr. Ben in the house. Lovely to be I'm here. Loving it. I've just realised as well. We've given every other presenter that we work with their own special sort of YouTube name, but you've escaped somehow. I know. <laughs> other than Acoustic Ben, Acoustic, I suppose. Yeah. My favourite one was um, Gentleman Ben. We had recently <laughs> with the DJ good. instead of G for gent. Anyway. <laughs> Why are we here today, Mr. Ben? Um, we're here today. <laughs> we are here today to look at and compare the new Highway Series guitars from Fender against some of the other Fender kind of acoustic-related products. Indeed. Well, you may so. have seen the video that I did with Billy Martinez at Fender HQ uh, that came out on the day when these were released. Uh, I suspect on the days these were released, YouTube was carpet bombed with uh, videos on the new Highway series, but hopefully you've seen uh, the one that Anderson's did. If not, links below or up there. The question we didn't ask in that video was A, does Ben like them as our resident acoustic expert? But B was like, how different does it really sound to a plugged in one of these versus maybe a plugged in one of these. Ooh. May I have the Acoustasonic? Of course, let me pass it over. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Four years ago, roughly-ish, um, this was released mm -hmm. in its Telecaster shape and subsequent Stratton Jazzmaster shapes. Designed, uh, if you didn't know already, by the guy that had successfully designed the Taylor T5, which is another one of these kind of hybrid yeah. acoustic electric guitars. This is called Acoustasonic. It was designed to be a real hybrid electric and acoustic guitar. So it, it had a kind of electric shape, a kind of familiar neck if you're used to playing electric guitar or acoustic guitar. You could string it with acoustic strings like we have here. Not really designed to be played acoustically. True. But with some really powerful DSP and pickup system in here mm -hmm. that would enable you to emulate a host of acoustic guitars or your favorite Telecaster sound. Yeah. And if you had the Strat, the same, and Jazzmaster, the same. So we're going to try that. And these Acoustasonic has been hugely popular. There yeah. are two versions of the Acoustasonic series. There's mm. the, the full fat American version, which is what we've got here with the full DSP system in it. And then there's a Mexican version of this with a cut down mm. um, pickup system in it but it's still very much a hybrid electric acoustic guitar. So I think yeah. the arguments that we heard a lot perhaps about this was, I'd rather have a regular acoustic guitar yeah. or I'd rather have an, a regular electric guitar. I'd mm -hmm. rather have two guitars almost, if you like, rather yeah, yeah. than one for some people. Anyway, if you could pop that back. Sure. We were, you know, I don't need to tell you what this is, all right? So for like for decades now, people have been taking normal acoustic guitars mm -hmm. to gigs and then plugging them in using a, oh, a gamut of different systems. Yeah, yeah. But the, the piezo system is probably the most prevalent Certainly. and least loved, but it's cheap, right? It's how we do it. <laughs> so how would you explain what Highway is? Well, I've, this is the first time I've seen them. They are... I would, my instant thought was this is definitely a stage acoustic guitar. And I think yeah. that's, you know, that's, that's the angle they've gone with it. I've, I've just had a quick play. It's a lot of fun. It's a bit thicker than the Acoustasonic. So it's a bit louder acoustically. Yeah. The design stuff I think is really clever. The way that the, the top kind of sits floating with the floating X bracing and stuff. It does make it quite lively to play. It gives it a real acoustic vibe. But then it's got the, the Fluence pickup, which they designed apparently at the same time as the guitar. So mm -hmm. it's all, like it's all been designed in one, one thing. Yeah. As a stage guitar, I think it's brilliant. I've got to say, the sound is good. It's comfortable to play. Yeah. The feedback resistance is really, really good. Um, it's comfortable to play. I'd probably play it sitting around on the sofa, but as an acoustic instrument, it, although it's louder than the acoustic sonic, yeah. it's still not as loud as an acoustic, but there's the two different sizes. You've got kind of dreadnought size and the parlor size. And yeah, it's for a performing instrument, particularly if you're playing with a loud band where feedback is always a struggle. Yeah. Um, if you're playing acoustic guitar, it's a pretty practical solution to it. I mm. completely concur with everything that you have said. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely got its roots in 
an acoustic guitar that has been developed for stage use. Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. When I first got to play these, in fact, well, you've got the parlor, right? We'll, yeah, yeah. we'll try both. Let's just go, if we go through one of the things, or some of the things that surprised me, I was really pleasantly surprised actually how big the sound was mm. just as an acoustic. I mean, it, it's not, you know, it's not a Martin no. D28. It's, it's not any big, you know, it's not as big as a normal acoustic. But whereas there was this idea that if you had an Acoustasonic, you mm. could kind of sit and noodle with it on the sofa. It really sounded a bit like an unplugged in electric guitar. Yeah. But let's have a little listen. Sure. And again, perhaps you've got the choice of two tops here, mahogany mm -hmm. tops and uh, spruce tops. So maybe just acoustically, and all that's going to pick this up is probably our lapel microphones. Yeah. So we're not trying to sort of professionally mic this because like, why mm. would you? Let's just have a little listen, just sure. completely acoustically. <laughs> With the mahogany top sure. now. The bigger one. The bigger one. We're just um, rapidly going. It, it reminds me, it's like an extreme version of something like a Yamaha APX. You know, where, yes. where they've got like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, a substantially shallower and smaller yes. body than a conventional and you lose that sort of bass and it's like just the next iteration of that isn't yeah, it yeah it is you're, you're, you're right so uh, uh, dreadnought spruce but it's surprisingly loud <laughs> i was gonna say this you one know. Is, the dreadnought is and louder then, than the parlor and well then just expect. yeah just do that last one interesting the tonal difference between the tops because everything else on the construction is it's, the same i just think it's fascinating that, yeah. that, that again we talk about you know the difference different timbers make on different guitars and of course an acoustic guitar is different to an electric guitar but it's a much softer top end on the mahogany top yeah, ones isn't much it? more mid-rangey mm. um and i know you know the the, the interior construction is designed mm. for the kind of electric nature of it but yeah um i'm surprised by that and how much louder the spruce was than the mahogany as well yes yeah well yeah. i think it's, it's much brighter isn't it yeah. i love the so i love the construction i love that the back and the sides is kind of carved out of a a, a single block yeah. and then the um the sort of the pre-braced top is inlaid into the sort of the cavity and and things like the I think they've done the cosmetics or the aesthetics really nicely, you know, the sort of the little, yeah. I guess, sort of herringbone style um, inlay around the rosette and around the body binding is pretty. It's a bolt on neck guitar design. So you can see on the back here, um, you've got the cavity yeah. for the battery and the cavity for controls here. The neck plate, I thought one thing that was really cool, it's got the micro tilt system. Right, which uh, we've not had that since the seventies. No, I, I know, but like <laughs> apparently it's been redesigned so it actually works properly this time. Right. Um, yeah, which is really good because uh, just so you can adjust the, the, the kind of the angle of the neck, which yeah. is really useful when you've got an acoustic bridge, particularly. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so that kind of again, we probably did a deeper dive into actual specs and mm. stuff in the in the previous video. Um, I was really impressed with it plugged in. So we're, we're going to, and, and obviously that is predominantly what it's for. So mm. let's just. Do you want to stay with that yeah, one for the time being? Oh, pardon me. So I guess really now, and actually, you know what, I'm going to, sorry to, I'm going right. to go the other way. I'm going to start you with this one. Okay. Because it's almost like that's probably everyone watching this, if they've ever played an acoustic guitar plugged in, will probably have experienced this sound. Ben is now playing a Fender, I can't remember what this series was. This is was. the F Fender Redondo California series. So it's a sort of a mid-price guitar. Um, but it just has a simple piezo system yeah. on it. So it's not got a miking system or a transducer system in it. It's no. an underbridge, which mm. is generally used, I think, because it, it's, it will have a reasonably high feedback resistance compared to other types of acoustic yeah. mics. Um, it's widely available and affordable and so often sort of yeah. fitted to these kind of guitars. 
it's absolutely synonymous with a very bright and slightly unnatural, yeah. mic, you know, acoustic yeah. guitar sound. And so it, I wouldn't have said, I wouldn't have said there's a great deal of love for this kind of pickup, but it is widely used on thousands and thousands of different acoustic designs. But yeah. let's have a little listen. So I'm going to start with the volume on the guitar completely off so you can hear the acoustic sound through all lapels like we did with that. Yeah. And then I'm going to turn the volume up and you'll just hear the direct sound. Okay, yeah. so here we go. Acoustically. I mean, let, uh, go I'm straight gonna, into I'm the thing. Yeah, yes. Here we go. So the volume is now up about, there we go. So. I mean, A, uh, I was surprised relatively. I thought that would be a lot louder than what we heard through this acoustically. Yes. And it's, although that it's, it, is, it is a fuller sound, mm. it wasn't like night and day like I thought it might be. No, a lot, like, a, like yeah, low frequencies were obviously missing on these because they've only got a yeah. you know, two and a three quarter yeah. body. But, a, but yeah, the volume wise, it was yeah. quite. But comparable. I think what's interesting, and people should hear that between the natural acoustic sound they heard on the Pell versus the, the, the piezo out, that slightly upper mid range brightness, quacky, whatever you want to call it, it's yeah. not the most natural sound, is it? It's but, not. And I, it's one of my pet hates because, particularly mm. if you play acoustic guitar, acoustically a lot yes and then you go to a gig and you plug in mm. and it feels like a completely different instrument yeah i think if you're in a band mix it yeah. probably doesn't matter so much but if you're a solo performer you know uh, you perhaps sing a solo performer or whatever yeah. like that anyway that's what a normal acoustic guitar sounds like that's it right so acoustic wise you have a five-way blade on it all the way forward as it yeah. is now and for i think the first maybe three settings are all just various dsp kind of acoustic settings yeah. Volume is always volume. The tone control, though, is like a, a modeling thing. Like so as you between adjust Between different it, models, right? That's right. Yeah. So let's just hear acoustically what this sounds like. So turned off. Here we go. So there's no doubt that in that <laughs> test, the normal acoustic sounds better. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> but now let's play the... the we're only going to show two sounds, just going to show the, one of the acoustic sounds and then the kind of the electric guitar sound of that, which is the cool bit. So uh, turn it up then. Okay, so this is the acoustic kind of all the way forwards here. I think the acoustic of that sounds better than the piezo on, I think on that. It, I think so. And I think with maybe with a bit of kind of fiddling with this, the kind of mm. the knob here that does the different modes and things, you could probably make it sound yeah. even kind of more to your taste. Yeah. So that's what Acoustasonic, and Acoustasonic, if you buy the full fat American one, has a, like half a dozen different acoustic models in it. And actually, just go all the way to the back position. So, this is kind of it's, it's, again, emulating what a Telecaster into a slightly driven Fender amplifier yeah. would sound like. Everything you're hearing, by the way, today is just guitar cable yeah. into the um, DAW. So we're not processing this or doing anything. If we've put some reverb on, that's the only thing we've done. But everything is plugged in the same way. Acoustically first, mm -hmm. as we've done the others, on the lapel mic. It's literally as it should be, which is a bit bigger and bassier than that one. Not quite as big and bassy as that yeah, one. Yeah, surprisingly as you would loud. Expect. Yeah, but yeah. And okay, so, okay, so turned up, and this is with the contour knob turned all so, the way up so as well. There's no DSP processing on this, is there? It's just Fishman mm, Fluent system. Yeah. That's it, there's, that's the only pickup is here. There's no under saddle, it's just this fluence. Yeah. So uh, this is how that sounds. I mean, that's a nice plugged in sound. It's. It's my favourite of the plugged in acoustic sounds, I right. think. I was, I was, it's definitely, I like the, I did think the Acoustasonic, the, the black Telecaster mm. one over there, had a great, well, we didn't delve into all of what it can do, but I thought that was very good. It's a, I'd much prefer that sound to the plugged in piezo sound. Yeah, me too. I think bizarrely, where, where Highway works for me, mm is if I want to look like I'm playing an acoustic guitar on stage yeah. in a rock and roll band or whatever, 
I don't want to look like I've got a Telecaster. There's, I want to look like I've got an acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know, yeah, does that really matter in all? I mean, it's obviously completely subjective and personal. But yeah, that suits you, as does mm. any of these highway models, if that's the image you're trying to convey. Yeah. And functionally, Every, it does everything that it says that, you know, it's like a tin of Ron seal, you know, it does what it says on the tin type yeah. thing. It's like, yep, it's comfy to play. It doesn't feed back. It's mm -hmm. got a good DI'd electric guitar, uh, acoustic guitar kind of tone. Yeah. Um, so I think all, it's like all the objective stuff is like tick, 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 tick. Yeah. But for some weird reason at a, at a purely aesthetic subjective level, I'd rather be seen playing that than that. And I don't know if it's a psychological thing, because I feel more inclined to play acoustic type stuff on this yeah. than I do on it, even though they feel mm. very similar. Like the neck is kind of similar. Um, I mean, the neck on this is a bit shorter, but you know, these dreadnought ones, yeah. it's the same I mean, neck I, really. I, I, like, maybe I'm being slightly unfair to Acoustasonic. It's, it's supposed to be a hybrid guitar. It's yeah. supposed to be for somebody that's standing up going, right, this song I need to accompany the band with a bit of acoustic. This song, I need to play a bit of rock and roll, telecast the lead sound, and I don't want to have to swap guitars. And that's what Acoustasonic does really, mm. really well. Um, this, I think, is just much more comfortably in the I'm a plug in acoustic guitar. Yeah, like for this is for gigging, the con, like mm. the, the, the way that the contour knob just kind of takes the low end mm. off to help cut through a mix well, look, of the bands and stuff. Like it's just. It, I well mean, thought out for gigging musicians. I think it? the only couple of other things to say before I just let you maybe, maybe play out an extended piece on that guitar and then maybe we'll show the parlor with the mahogany top or whatever yeah, like yeah. that um is uh pricing on highway is um more in line with the mexican version of acoustasonic so i think these are going to be something like 900 pounds so that's that's uh, it's a better value proposition than the american acoustasonic mm -hmm. they're still doing them with the lovely lovely bags that the acoustasonic yeah. range has come with so this i mean that is a, a I, I don't i don't want to underestimate that's <clears throat> not your average cheap bag no, that you no, get no. free with a guitar i mean that's probably you know 100 quids worth of bag or something there um it's simple it's just you know it's not a rechargeable usb thing there's no dsp it's like it's no. just it's just a stick your nine volt battery and i was gonna say and and there you go the guys uh, uh, that i chatted to from fender assured me that the nine volt battery will last about as long as it lasts in a standard acoustic guitar, because it's not doing the DSP, so it's not yeah. using loads your, of power. Your, your so. tip there is always, always unplug your acoustic guitar always. preamp when you're finished, because as soon as the lead's plugged in, <clears> it's <throat> essentially on. Yeah. Uh, well, look, I mean, is there anything else you want to sort of, you know, is it, I suppose it's an awkward question, and I, I probably I wouldn't expect you to say anything other yeah. than this, but is that a guitar you could, you know, see yourself using as a, as a stage guitar? For, I mean, for gigging, yeah, like totally. For the, the, I think the person who's going to find this really useful is someone who's playing in a relatively big band mm -hmm. where you're always standing in front of monitors with PA systems, and this would just make your life easier for that. You know? Like a worship band or something like that. Could like be worship, yeah, yeah, the worship guys would probably love this. Yeah, um, you know. Touring acts, if you just want something that's yeah. super easy, that's not going to cause yeah. you too many problems. It's my favourite looking, you know, of, if I took T5, Acoustasonic, all the other attempts mm. at, you know, go down yeah. Multiac, all that kind of stuff. It's, I think they've nailed the acoustic aesthetic better than anyone else. And it feels more like an acoustic guitar somehow, yeah. probably because of that, like you were saying. Mm. Um, well, let's have a, we'll have a, a, an <clears> extended piece on that. An extended piece on this one. You guys can come down to Anderton's anytime you like. Give one a will. Will. Give one a whirl even. Um, links will be below if you want to find out more. Maybe you want to buy one, which would be awesome. That's and it. those links will be below. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Ben. It's always, always a pleasure, pleasure to see yeah. you. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. See you soon.
mais ainda. <risos>